when an athlete sprints to the finish line or battles past a major obstacle, their heartbeat recovers quickly as soon as the challenge has passed. A heart can be pumping along at 50, 150 beats per minute and within two minutes can slow down to 60 if the heart is fit and a fit heart is developed through the discipline of exercise. <clears throat> Paul tried to demonstrate this to the early Christians. Today's lesson is taken from the letter of the Apostle Paul written to the church which he had established in Philippi. He wrote the letter while he was in prison. In it, he hoped to reassure the congregation of his undiminished joy, even taking into account the circumstances. And he also wanted to express his confidence regarding the outcome. He wanted to help those new Christ followers develop perseverance and hearts of fortitude so that by <coughs> example and encouragement, they could stand fast in their faith. Paul says, brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example that you have in us. Paul is suggesting, do as I do. Now, he had already previously described who he was in Christ. His goal was not worldly success, which he used to have as one who taught the Jewish law, but to live in the spirit of Christ. He wanted to know the power and of the hope of resurrection and be willing to suffer like Christ for what was just and right in the kingdom of God. But today we always ask, what would Jesus do? At that time, however, the good news of Jesus was just beginning to spread throughout the land. It was coming from the teaching of the apostles. Paul was on the cutting edge of teaching and forming communities and encouraging others through his letter writing. The Gospels had not been written down yet, so new followers relied on Paul to teach them the Christian practices by sharing the stories of Jesus and by being a living example of Christ's love. The do as I do model. Leading by example is still an effective method. And that's why, as we celebrated earlier, scouting prepares men and women through, for leadership through trainings. That's why they provide experiences like camping so the youth can see their lessons put into practice and can watch their leaders persevere through life challenges and still stand firm on their morals and beliefs and behaviors. Our children are watching us every minute of every day. They are learning from us. Each week, as part of my sermon series, I've been asking a key question. This week I asked, what habits or practices or disciplines do you do day by day that strengthen you for when times are tough? Some people answered by telling me what they do to escape to escape the pain for a little bit, to escape reality. Watching TV and reading and playing video games are great distractions. But when times are tough, most of us will have to face reality and work through our challenges. Prayer is really helpful. Many people, that was the first thing that they talked about. By asking for God's help, we remember that we're not alone and that God will aim to work for justice and mercy in every situation. Music 
is really helpful. We, it calms us. It slows our heart rate. It focuses our thoughts. And depending on what we're listening to, it also reminds us that God is with us and that we're not alone. Reading scripture is helpful. We can cry out to God through the Psalms. And we can refocus on the loving responses that Christ gave us. And we're reminded that God has worked all throughout history to bring something good out of every situation. But the practice that was mentioned the most was to turn to other Christians. We learn from their example. We get a, a different perspective. You know, instead of this perspective where the world is crushing in on you, we get a perspective by someone who might have been through what we've been through. A fresh set of eyes. We get to hear their words of encouragement and support. People who have committed to attending small groups like our Monday Lunch Bunch and our Tuesday Book Club or the Wednesday Bible Study or the Thursday Prayer Shawl or when they gather in small groups like Scouts. They have had their hearts strengthened for perseverance in those small groups. Where two or three are gathered, Christ is there. Prayer, music, and scripture, and other believers helped them feel that powerful presence of Christ. In Christ and through Christ, they were transformed. By Christ, they can move past self-preservation to do what is right. They can stand firm in the Lord. There once was a young husband and wife. They lived in a little south side Chicago apartment. The husband was a musician and was scheduled to leave his very pregnant wife to play with his band in St. Louis. As he leaned in to kiss her goodbye, though, his heart was pulled, anxiety, and a feeling that he shouldn't go was all throughout his body. But work is work, and so he headed off down Route 66. The next night after the show, he received the news that his wife had died in childbirth. His newborn baby died the next day and he buried them together in the same casket. For days he railed at God. He felt that God had done him an injustice, that he didn't want to serve him anymore or write any more gospel songs. And then he thought something had been pulling, pulling at his heart that day, telling him to stay with his wife. But he had gone on a business trip. What if that something had been God, he wondered. If he had stayed with his wife and son, would they still be alive? He vowed to listen to God more closely, and instead of turning away, began to turn back to the practices and people that made him feel close to the Lord. Then one evening, at a local music school, his hands began to browse over the keys, and peace simply filled his whole heart. Wrapped in such an intense feeling of God, words and music just fell into place, and he began to sing. Precious Lord, take my hand. Thank you. 
story of Tommy Dorsey, a big band trombonist of the 30s and 40s, but it actually belongs to Thomas A. Dorsey, an African-American blues and gospel artist. His dad had been an itinerant preacher and his mom an organist, and he had started playing the blues to help support his family. Georgia Tom was his blues persona, and under that he became very well known. He was in such demand that by the 1930s he was overwhelmed by stress and turned back to freight the faith practices of his youth to find his way by, back to health and wholeness. The death of his wife, Nettie, and of his baby son in 1932 was his turning point. He ceased recording under the name Georgia Tom and threw himself into developing gospel music. Along with Theodore Fry and Sally Martin, he is not only credited with devising the term gospel music, but also establishing gospel choirs and choruses throughout the United States. He also discovered Michaela Jackson, who sang Take My Hand at Dr. Martin Luther King's funeral. During Lent, our faith tradition encourages us to re-examine our lives and our faith practices. We are encouraged to shape up and spend intentional time with God to strengthen our hearts, to develop practices that will allow us to persevere and stand fast in our faith. Thomas Dorsey once said, that when we are in our deepest grief, when we feel the farthest from God, this is when he is the closest and when we are most open to God's restoring power. Open to the Lord's transformation and sustained by our faith practices, we can do much more than simply survive our personal challenges. We can persevere like Dorsey did to change our world for the better. Amen.